Okay, welcome back to part two. Uh, and here we go. Look at this. Isn't this fantastic? Nice, rich colours. Um, beautiful, rich yellows and oranges and purples. Perfect combination for any painting. Okay, uh, trees. I'm going to do the tree line next, okay? Those lovely, rich, dark trees going all the way across. It creates a beautiful silhouette, doesn't it? And let me get a brush now for this. So... I normally tend to use a stubby brush, okay? Um, I normally tend to use a medium stubby brush, but I'm not sure if I want something that's very splayed out like this. This looks a little bit too splayed for me. Um, I want something with a bit more control, so I might go for something slightly smaller, but you can see it's still kind of starting to wear. I don't know if you can see that now or not, but it's still kind of starting to bulk up slightly. That's what you want, okay? Um, you know, there's no point in trying to use a very flat brush like this because you won't get the roughness of the trees. So something that's just kind of starting to get bulky. Now, I have fresh turpentine. I have all the same colours. So I'm just going to dampen my brush. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start very warm and rich in around the centre. Now, this I did leave this dry overnight, okay? But it's still a little sticky. All right. Um, it's not too bad, but some of the colours may mix into the background as you're going. So just bear that in mind. Okay, let's go. Let's start with some burnt sienna, um, some crimson. Now, this is very rich and very dark, okay? But around by the sun, there's a kind of a glow on the trees. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. I'm going to try this very warm, rich colour first, okay? Now, I'm just going to go along like this, and I'm going to... That's kind of the, te the technique that I want to use, okay? Now, it, let, let's darken it slightly. I'll take some burnt umber into this. And go right down to your masking tape, okay? Or, as they say sometimes, your horizon line. Go right down there against that. Um, now, you can, if you wish, you could just make this very dark, okay? It's completely up to yourself. I'm going to just add some burnt umber to this. I'm going to go right along, just till about here, okay? And then I'm going to go dark from here on. So around the centre there, I just want that nice warm tone, nice rich warm colour. And by the way, we will put some little highlights on this as well um, later, okay? Just small, very subtle highlights from the sun. So don't be worried. Um, you know, we're going to get some nice brightness from the sun. And I want to darken this now as it goes out. So I'm going to just dampen my brush ever so slightly. And take lots of burnt umber and lots of crimson. I'm putting plenty of crimson in this now because I want this nice, rich, warm colour. Okay? Burnt umber on its own will be a little bit bland. So the little bit of crimson in this will just give it that lovely warmth. Okay? And let's just go up like that. I'm only just suggesting some outlines of trees that's all okay that's all i'm doing it's just a suggestion let's get some burnt umber on its own and come down a bit look let's go down a bit here and then we'll go right up again and you can see how wet this is look it's quite wet because you can see the color underneath showing through can't you i'm just going to thicken it slightly put some burnt umber on that thicken it slightly as it goes off up there So that's a nice little tree line we have so far. Let's come over to the other side and take some burnt umber with some crimson. And let's just go along here with this as well. Soften it into that lovely rich red we have. Soften those in together. They're lovely, aren't they? Lovely colours, I must say. <clears throat> and... As it comes over now, I want to really darken it over here. So I'm going to start taking some black, okay? Some black and some crimson and a hint of phthalo blue. 
So I'm almost going for like a kind of a purpley colour. Okay, a rich, very dark, blacky kind of a purple colour. Thalo blue, lots of crimson, and a hint of black, okay? It's like um, like a very dark, purpley grape kind of a colour, if you understand what I mean by that. No, it's just get the impression of some tips of some trees there. I'm just dabbing with my brush just along the edges to make it kind of a rough effect. And go right out there, down to the horizon line. Okay, no, that's not bad so far, is it? Next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to, with this brush now, get some black and some crimson. Now, it's probably 90% black, really. I want to go and darken right down at the very base where this meets the horizon line, okay? So I'm going along the bottom first, just up a little, then I'm going to soften it up with my brush, okay? So now it's going from this very warm, ready brown colour down to a kind of a black, shadowy colour. And it can go up and down, up and down, but... The main reason for this is just to darken it right down, okay? And we can do the same over here. Let's add a little bit over here. Okay, just towards the base, the base, and make a nice dark line down there. Down towards the bottom. We have very rich darkness down there, don't we? Now I'm going to add one or two tr slightly taller trees over on this side. Okay. I'm just see the way I'm sort of twisting my brush. Just here and there. So, how was that? Now, I'm going to put a nice purple. Okay, I'm just cleaning my brush very quickly. Dip it in and give it a good rub on some tissue. Let's take some phthalo blue. And let's get some crimson. And I'm going to put a hint of this purple. In fact, do you know what I will do? I'll take a hint of white as well. Okay? And I'm going to put this hint of purple into the trees in the dark area. Look, and I'm just suggesting some um, reflecting shadows. That's the kind of the f that's the feeling I'm trying to get. That's what they call um, a very bright shadow. So sometimes, even in a shadowed area, you'll get um, light bouncing off of the shadow. And it creates this sort of a purpley kind of effect. Do you see that? Put a little bit over on this side as well. Now, you probably can't see this, but you will when I zoom in later, okay? A little bit just around the centre there. And that purple just kind of complements the sky, complements the shadows... And it just ties everything together. Now, I want to move on and get a small pointy brush. First, I need to get some crimson on my palette because my crimson has run out. Let me have a look. There we go. Beautiful colour, crimson. I like to use crimson in almost every single painting. I think it's just, for me, it's one of those colours that I cannot do without. Um, there is no other colour like crimson, you know. You can always, you know, it does magenta... Um, there's a couple of other colours, but crimson is very unique for a red, for a rich pink red. Now, I'm going to take a very small pointy brush, and will I zoom in for you, ever so slightly, so you can see this. <clears throat> I must take a sip of coffee, I do apologise. Okay, pointy brushes at the ready. That's still recording. It is. Perfect. I'm going to take that very rich, dark black colour. Let's get some black. And we want plenty of turpentine in this now, okay? It's going to be like a watercolour. Very, very thinned out. Very watery. A nice black, okay? And then take a hint of crimson. And we have this lovely watery colour there now on our palette, all right? 
And what I want to do is just start putting in some trees. Let's try it. Let's go for, I'm going to go slightly off center, okay? Um, you know, when you're painting a subject like this, even on the reference photograph there, you can see, it's always, I kind of cropped this in, um, this image on my phone here, the one you're looking at, the reference photograph was a lot bigger than this. So that tree was way off in the distance, but I zoomed in and I cropped it to keep the tree slightly to the left. Because if it was something right in the middle, it just doesn't look right. It's not good for a composition. So always keep something that's in your painting, a prominent aspect, like a tree or a building or something. Keep it off center, never right in the center because it just won't help your painting. So I'm going to go to the left of that sunny area here now, okay? I'm going to go right up there and put a nice big thick tree in there, okay? Now you want a lot of turpentine in this for this to flow really nicely. And if you have shaky hands, then that's better again, all the better, because you will paint fantastic trees if you have shaky hands. Right down there. And the thinner the brush, the better, okay? Try and find yourself a really pointy brush. And the best way to get a, a a little brush nice and pointy is to just roll it on the paint and add plenty plenty of turpentine so we have that um and you see i'm only just making a simple look i'm just giving them a little flick tiny tiny little flicks with the brush and you can keep going with this for an hour if you like or two hours you take all the time you need i'm just going to give an impression here of what i'm doing because if I sit here doing this with little twigs and branches, I could be here for three hours myself. Um, I don't have enough time in this tutorial to paint for that long, unless you want to see a time lapse. But I don't think you like to see time lapses, do you? We don't do time lapses on this show. Um, a lot of people do just put on time lapses. You can't learn from a time lapse. You really can't. I, I don't think you can learn from a time lapse. You can see what they're doing and you can kind of maybe get a quick glimpse of the technique. But in general, I don't think you can learn anything from time lapses. Um, and that's why I don't like doing it. I prefer to be more personal, kind of a one to one. Too sure. Um, you know, I like to give you a decent a decent lesson at least you can go away after looking at this and you can say well you know what now i know how to paint a tree a basic tree in a silhouette so that means i've done my job i've done something right haven't i now see let's just keep going with this um i'm going to put another one just in the center here as a nice silhouette for that sun okay just a small one i'm not going to go too big with this just a nice little silhouette And I'm just giving a little tiny flicks, look, just to suggest the branches and twigs. In fact, you wouldn't even need to do this. You could just give it a slight dab with a brush. And then I want to sit those into the bushes around them. So I'm just going to rough it up, look. I'm just going to rough up those bushes around so that they're disappearing into these dark bushes. You see? Just rough it up, add a little bit of dark down in there to make them sort of disappear. Now there, isn't that lovely? I'm going to take some crimson and I want to add some of this crimson. I might take a hint of cadmium yellow deep as well, look. And even a hint of cadmium red. I want to put some nice warm branches around this because that sun is going to catch those branches especially around the edges so i'm going to put just a hint of that color on some of the twigs and branches around the edges okay so you can kind of see now the sun is catching and creating that lovely color just here and there And you could even put in one or two warm trees with this color.
You see, just a suggestion here and there. I'm just kind of breaking it up, that's all. Um, okay, now I'm going to take another brush. I am going to get, let me see what brush I have here now. Okay, I'm going to take this very rough brush. And I'm going to take some of this warm and dark colour, okay? And I'm going to add a tiny amount of foliage onto this tree, okay? You can see all I'm doing is just dabbing little foliage here and there. Let's come up here and add a little touch of it there. And I want to make the tree slightly thicker, I think. I think I want to make it slightly more pronounced. I'm going to go up a little more with the tree, okay? I think it's just sort of slightly too small. I think it needs to be a little more on the strong side, a little more, have a little more impact. So I'm just going to add one or two thicker branches and maybe make this one slightly thicker as well. Does that make sense? And maybe even make this one slightly thicker also. So that's a really nice silhouette there now against that sun. Okay. And then to balance it out, I might just put one over here, okay? Just one small one. Just to have something on the opposite side of the canvas, just to bring your eye across. Okay? Only just, only just slightly, you see? I think it does help. Okay, we're ready for our water. Let's pull this off. Look at this lovely clean line that we have. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I'm going to stand back and just take a quick look at this. Okay, I'm happy with that so far. I hope you are. Let's crack on and have a bit of fun now with this water here. Reflections. I need to get a cup of coffee for this. Reflections can be tricky. They can be very, very tricky and very difficult. Um, my take on reflections is keep it simple, okay? I like to keep my reflections simple. I'm going to take a brush. Uh, let me get a nice brush here and I'm going to stick flat brush, okay? I'm not going to use a large stubby, but a medium kind of a stubby brush. I have a couple of medium stubbies here, but they're not very very worn some of them are just very badly worn and some are very flat so this for instance that's perfect now for big trees but it's not good for water like this i'm going to get something that's slightly thicker it's slightly newer okay i'm going to start with the orange in the center here and generally when you're painting reflections um the color in the reflection will be slightly darker and stronger and richer than what it's reflecting. So we have a nice yellow here. So I'm going to make a nice rich, dark, yellowy orange for the reflection. Let's dampen our brushes. Let's take some cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow deep. And let's go with some crimson. And keep adding tiny amounts of crimson. I'll zoom back actually, so you can see my palette. I do apologize about this now. Okay, there we go. You can see my palette again. Crimson and a bit of yellow. And we're going to get plenty of each of these now, all right? I might lean more towards towards the ready side of this colour. The, the, more, the more pinky kind of side of it, okay? So more pink. Let me just get this in and have a look. Now, I start with, I go with this colour, I think, for now. Because we can always add lighter colours in later, you see. So I'm going to go across the centre with this now, just right across here, across your line. So you can see because this is nice and watery, it's flowing across nicely. I'm going to add a little bit more pink. And as it comes out towards the sides, it's getting more and more pinker, okay? So a little bit more crimson.
Go right out here, all the way. Don't worry if you pick up a little bit of colour, okay? Just be careful with this black. Don't pick up any of that black because you'll end up with a green. Black and orange make a kind of a greeny colour, so be very careful. Just push down on your brush hard and you'll go nice and sharp against that line. Okay? Yellow and pink again. And let's go over here. I'll go right into the centre first. Look. Let's get this nice rich colour in here first. And then as it comes out, more pink. So I'll take a little hint of crimson and I might take the tiniest hint of phthalo blue. The tiniest, tiniest little hint, okay? Um, it's In fact, it's probably pretty much just pink at this stage. Just a very rich pink with a little bit of the yellow. I don't want to overdo the greens on this. I don't want to make any must, mucky kind of green colour, so I'm being very careful. Okay, let's get some more of the orange. So you can see now I basically put a nice rich orange right across my canvas, yeah? From one side right across to the next. Go right up into that tree line, lean down hard. If you want to leave a bit of white there, just leave a bit of white there. It's absolutely fine. So, the next step now for me, you can see I have a nice tin colour on this, a nice transparent colour. The next step now really is to um, put on nice thick paint on its own. <clears throat> That's how I build up my layers. So a little bit of thicker paint. I'm going to start making a nice mauve. Okay, to complement the mauve in the sky, I'm going to make a nice mauve. So let's take a little phthalo blue, but a clean brush now again. Let me clean my brush properly. Any yellow or orange that's in your brush will make a, a kind of a green if you go into a blue. So be very careful. Look, I happened to me there, you see it? So I'm giving my brush a good, really good clean. Um, in fact, I'll change. I'll switch to a smaller brush, look. Let's take some phthalo blue with some crimson and again I'm going to go more towards crimson in this okay so uh, more of a plum kind of a color let me take a look at this you want to avoid too much blue because we have an orange hair if you put something with a bluey purple on this you're going to end up with that mucky kind of a green color so remember that please um, Oranges and blues are completely opposite colours um, on the colour kind of wheel, as they say. Um, they don't work well together, okay? Purples and oranges um, mixing together. No, I mean, as a complementary colour, they're lovely, okay? But if you mix them together by accident, you're going to end up with a very opposite tone, okay? So be very, very careful with that. Now... I'm going to need more crimson in this. A little bit more plummy kind of a colour is what I want. A little bit more, I think. Some more crimson. And I'll take a tiny hint of turpentine in this. Just a tiny hint and a tiny hint of phthalo blue. So I'm going to put in a crimson first, a nice kind of a thinned out, warm kind of a crimson, alright? I know I said I was going to use thick paint first, but I'm, I just want to warm this colour because that's gone very dark and mucky there, isn't it? So I just want to add a little crimson over that. Just to clean it slightly, make it slightly brighter. And go left to right with your brush strokes all the time, okay? It's always left to right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a nice pink, a rich kind of a bright, purpley pink. I'm going to go with some crimson, little white, 
And because we have white in this, it's going to cover lovely. A tiny amount of phthalo blue. So you can see now, it's a very bright. It's not very bright, but it's a nice light kind of a pink, you see? I'm going to just take some of that. I'm going to add some of that into my water over here. Let's go again. Some white. Some crimson. Tiny amount of phthalo blue. That'll just soften it ever so slightly. And this is going to help us then when we're trying to put on our kind of a bright mauve colour. So a light pink. Then we can start putting blue over it, you see. So let's get more crimson there. Take a hint of phthalo blue again. Tiny, tiny hint. And we can you can see there's a lovely kind of a mauve as well over here. You see it kind of coming into the painting. Soften it across ever so slightly. It's starting to take shape, you see. All these little subtle colours we're adding is just starting to take a bit of shape. Now, I want to go next with a very rich purple, I think. Let me get some phthalo blue. By the way, if you don't have phthalo blue, you can use French ultramarine, but that's a very rich colour, so just be very, use it very sparingly, okay? Phthalo blue and crimson. And I have a lovely rich purple then, okay? Let's take some crimson in here. Lots of it, look. Lots of crimson and a nice blob of phthalo blue. And a hint of white. The white will just make it more visible, okay? Let's put that purple, look. See that lovely purple? That lovely. And that's just suggesting light from the sky, the colour of that sky, that's all. And I'll put a little bit in here. So the purples and oranges really complement each other then, you see. Um, so what I was saying earlier was, you know, purples and oranges complement each other lovely on a painting if they're kind of side by side, but they'll never mix together nicely. You'll always end up with a very mucky colour. So that's why I was saying earlier, be very careful putting these colours together. So if I brought this purple over into this yellowy orange, I'd end up with a mucky green. But they're okay when they're kind of side by side. Does that make sense? So you see, I didn't mix it really very much in. Well, now we have a nice complementary colour there. I'm going to go in and get, I'm going to get another brush and I'm going to start putting in some nice rich yellows in here. A nice clean brush. Okay. Let me get some coffee. And I'm going to dampen my brush. Just dampen it. Let's get some nice rich yellows. Cadmium yellow deep, cadmium yellow pale. And the hint of turpentine will just kind of break it slightly, all right? I'm going to go right in where my trees are here, okay? I'm going to put this rich yellow and just soften it in, and it'll disappear down, okay? Because remember, we have a purple here. So don't go down too far into that purple, or you'll end up with a mucky green colour on your canvas. You can maybe make it more orangey as it comes down, okay? Then you'll get away with it slightly, but still be very careful. All right? So you can see I kind of picked up some colours there. I'm being very careful now not to blend these too much. I don't want any greens. So clean your brush well every time you do this. Now you can see already I have almost like a mucky green on my tissue here. See? Be very careful. Let's take some more. Let's get some cadmium yellow deep, actually, this time. With some cadmium yellow pale. Mix those together. I want a nice, rich, rich yellow for this. Let's go over here. And let's just suggest some of these kind of popping downwards, okay? You see? I'll put one or two around here. I 
and then some cadmium yellow on its own and I'm just going to basically pop it in very slightly just here and there okay I don't want to overdo this but I'm just focusing on the center where our sun is now I don't want to overkill this because because we have our reflections of our trees to go in as well and I don't want to be mixing colors through yellow that's what I don't want to do I'm going to go back now to my slightly wider brush okay you could pick up just a nice clean flat brush for this and I'm going to put in some reflections of our trees now we have a nice rich red here okay let's take crimson and almost zero turpentine in this now okay a little crimson with a little black okay let's try a little black I think that's all we need to reflect our trees here and I'm just going to pull them down very carefully and you can see I'm being very careful now around the yellows I'm not going into the yellows too much if you do want to go into the yellows you need a lot of pink okay you could just go into some crimson on its own and go into your yellows look because you know the crimson will soften through the yellow okay and just very loosely follow the shape of your trees all right let's go across here now as it comes over it does get a lot of dark it's just almost black you could say so let's just take a lot of black on our brush pull that across like that it would help as well if you want to turn this upside down and paint the trees like that um, you know I'm not too particularly fussy about how the trees are turning out because this is all just an impression for me um, you know I know a lot of people out there will want to paint like a mirror image I don't want to paint a mirror image at all it's just a, a very simple impression of this scene um, because what, what you do then is what I could do or what you could do if you like is take a soft brush like so and you could just pull them slightly down soften them very very slightly into the colour underneath okay that's just one way and then you could go across them like this all right and then you could kind of put some little touches of light hitting the water I just want to keep it simple like that you know what I mean now I'm going to take some more crimson and I'm going to go across here to these I'll darken one or two of these here put one or two darks there and in a moment then I'm going to paint the reflections of those trees okay and it's simply it's going to be simply just a case of painting what's there in reverse upside down that's all it's going to be so don't worry I'll make it nice and simple for you put this in look a little crimson a little black pop this one in here all right now let's before we continue on I want to get a flat chiseled edge kind of a painting knife okay I'm going to take some of this black color here and I'm just going to drag some of that down here and there um, I just want to create a little movement in the water that's all and you could even go across like this 
create some suggestions of some ripples, that kind of thing. So you can see it's just to break up the surface of the water, that's all. You could, there is, I mean, there is another technique where you could just go along like this and put all the different colours in and create uh, reflections like that. You could do that too. But it takes a long time, a very, very long time. Now I'm going to put in the reflections of my trees, okay? I'm going to take some crimson and lots of black, okay? Now you do need plenty of crimson in this because, again, we're painting through yellow. So... You don't want the black and yellow mixing too much and going green. So plenty of crimson in this, but it's a nice blacky colour, alright? And let's just simply paint this in and give it just a simple reflection like so. And it can kind of disappear then into the water, you see? So you're not having to paint every single branch. Does that make sense? And just sort of let them wiggle off and disappear into the water then. So you can see now it's nice and simple and you don't have to do too much work on it, okay? So this one goes that way first, or goes that way first, then there, and then it goes back down again. And you can see, I'm just sort of letting the brush disappear as it comes down, okay? It's just about giving a suggestion of the shape of that tree. You see, I'm not even looking now at the top, I'm just focusing on the bottom and just allowing the paint to sort of disappear and taper off as it comes down. Okay, but it still looks like the reflection, even though it's not 100% perfect. And let's put another one here, look. We can break this one up slightly, give it a couple of ripples. Okay. And another one here. This just goes slightly to the left, doesn't it? And again, it sort of disappears off, then down into the water. All right. You see? Nice and simple. Job done. And just follow the arch of that follow the arch of that sort of over here just to give an impression that it's there you see how nice is that let's give it a slight impression of this tree over here again only a touch we have a slight touch of some of these here okay we can just sort of rub them away into the water and look at that now how is that coming on so far it's rather nice, isn't it? Okay. The next thing we're going to do is I am going to sharpen some of my bright lines in there. Okay, so it's the painting is kind of focused around this kind of glow in the center. And I want to kind of sharpen those yellows. So I'm cleaning my pointy brush really well. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. And I'm going to take lots of rich cadmium yellow on its own okay load your brush with lots of cadmium yellow and i'm just going to go in here and i'm going to just put little dabs of that rich yellow here and there okay little tiny ripples of that yellow on either side of that tree and you see how that now is really focusing your attention on the glow in there, isn't it? 
Does that mean you kind of draw your eye right in? Little dabs here and there. And there we are. Let this just soften out into its surroundings, very lightly dragging the brush. Look, I'm hardly even touching the canvas in some parts. I'm just sort of letting this drag itself away, disappear. There we go, look at that. Now, there's something I want to do before we finish up. I'm going to take my palette knife. I'm going to mix a nice little purple. In fact, I'll use my brush. Okay, let me get my brush with my purple on it. I'm going to mix a nice, see this nice purple? I'm going to take some phthalo blue, some white and some crimson, okay? And I'm going to go for a slightly cooler colour in this. I'm going to take my knife, get some of that nice cool colour. And I'm going to suggest one or two ripples with this colour. This nice cool colour catching the surface of the water, okay? Just pop it in here and there, just a little on either side of your painting, all right? I'll put a hint of it over here, and that will just really complement the sky and trees and everything. Isn't that lovely? Little hint across, and then I'll put a little hint of a bright colour just across the centre here and just to break up the trees where they meet the bank, okay? Just a tiny, tiny amount. Now that's even enough. That's plenty. And put one just around there. I don't want to overkill this. I'll leave it alone. I have one more thing to do. And that is, I need to paint a little bird, because my painting is never complete without a bird. Um, I have enough on this side, I think. So I go up here, and I paint a little bird. Like that, flying across the sky. And you can look around then and see, is there anything that you think you would like to change? I'm going to soften some of this. It's actually almost dry, but I'm going to just soften some of this darker colour into it anyway. With a very dry brush. Very, very, very dry. All right. Um, is there anything else you think you might like to fix? I'm going to add some light to some of the trees. I'm going to take some crimson, little cyanide, and I'm going to, with that mix, crimson and cyan, thick paint, I'm just going to add a touch of that to some of the trees, okay? The light side of the trees where the sun may be catching. And it just gives you that little glow. All right? It's only a hint, but it's there. And, my friends, I'm happy with that. Look, it's a nice, simple little tutorial. Um, I never wanted to make it overcomplicated. I just wanted to keep it simple. So, I'm happy enough with the result. And you can keep going with this, if you like, for as long as your heart allows you. You know, keep going and just have a bit of fun. But remember to keep it simple. Now, I also have a frame for this. Let me go back here now and we put a frame on this. There we go. As they say, here's one I made earlier. A little frame. Now, and how is that, my friends? Okay, the frame needs work, but it's, I think, for... Look at that. Isn't that stunning? There we go. And we are finished, my friends.
I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Nice simple sunset. So there we go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, lovely, wonderful sunset. Nice, simple sunset. I'm delighted. It turned out lovely. Um, so I frame it and might hang it somewhere at home, inside the house. Who knows? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something, um, anything at all, about painting and colour mixing, uh, you know, and not making muddy colours on your canvas. I hope you've learned something about that. Just keep your colours to separate if you can, especially yellows with purples, okay? Be very careful, just practice. Um, let me know what you think. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already, you're missing so much fun. Um, if you want to support me, there are, you can pop over to Patreon and support me there. There are lots more tutorials, in-depth tutorials that you can learn from. If you wish to support me that way, thank you so much. I'll be back next week with another tutorial. I will see you very soon and happy painting, my friends.